name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma! Oh, I love you too, Glamour Girls. Hi everyone, Glamo here with Made with Love by Glamo, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love for you. Today at Tutorial Tuesday at Glamo's, we're going to be making Glamo's easiest tube socks ever. <laughs> but before we get started with that, as many of y'all know, I'm also a nail technician, so this is what I'm wearing today. China Glaze Nail Lacquer with Hardener. And it's called Whimsical, number 2215. So if any of y'all are interested in today's nail polish color of the day, that's what I'm wearing. Alrighty guys, so before we get started with today's tutorial, this is what you'll be needing. Sock weight yarn, a pair of scissors, a 3.50 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, also known as F, and this one's E, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. And you know, I think I'm in love with this yarn. It's Deborah Norville Collection, Serenity Sock Weight, and I love it because I didn't know that it was going to come out looking like this. It makes stripes automatically without having to change colors. <laughs> So it's so super easy and I love it. Um, I thought it was gonna be like the other yarns that we see um, that are multicolored. I thought it was gonna look like that. Um, so I was really surprised. This is a project that I'm making. It's my very first Tunisian crochet project and I'm making a blouse for my, um, for my granddaughters, for my glamma girls and I'm not quite finished, but it's almost there. <laughs> I'll show it to you when I'm completely finished. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna get started with a magic ring. Okay, but before we get started with our magic ring, I wanted to let you know, you can go ahead and use worsted weight yarn. I also made a pair with worsted weight yarn. I just used a bigger hook size. I believed I used a H and an I hook. Um, so you can follow the same instructions. Just use a bigger hook. If you're finding that H is still too small, then maybe go with an I and a J hook. The reason I say two size hooks is because we're going to use two different sizes on the sock. Okay, so I'll let you know when we're going to switch over to the next size hook. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that if you don't have sock weight yarn, you can still follow this tutorial. All right, let's get started with our magic ring now. Okay, so to make our magic ring, we're just going to pretend that we're making a slip knot, but we're going to bring that yarn coming from the skein up and back and we're going to yarn over with it and we're going to pull it through that little loop and now we're going to make 16 half double crochets into the ring. Normally you would chain up when you're going to make half double crochets but I'm going to make this sock in a spiral in a continuous circle so the shorter this first stitch is the better so that it'll be more of a gradual incline when I get ready to start my second row. So anyway for our half double crochets, yarn over, go into the ring, pull up a loop. Now you have three. Yarn over and you're going to go through all three loops and that's a half double crochet. And you have to excuse my Yorkie, she's drinking water. <laughs> so that's the noise you're hearing in the background. Okay, yarn over, go through the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through all three loops and you're going to do this until you have 16 half double crochets and then meet me back here. Okay so now that you have your 16 half double crochets into the magic ring um, we're going to make another half double crochet right into that very first one that we made. Like I said normally we would go in there and close it with a slip stitch, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to already start working in a continuous round in a spiral. So go ahead and uh, yarn over and go into the very first um, half double crochet that you made. And just proceed with your half double crochets. I hope I'm in the shot. That was hard to do. <laughs> this sock yarn is really hard to work with. Okay. So there we go, just pull it through all three. 
and we're just going to continue on now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put another one right back into there because now this is going to be our increase row. So we're going to put two half double crochets into every single stitch. Okay, so this is my second one into that stitch. Oh, and I should have told you to, this is what your stitch marker is for. Um, this is where we made our first half double crochet of the second row. So go ahead and put your stitch marker there so that we'll know when we get back around, we'll know that that row is completed and you can use your row counter to keep track of uh, how many rows you've done, okay? So you wanna remember everything you did for your first sock so you can do that to your second one. Okay, so there's two into that stitch and now we're going to put two half double crochets into the next one. And like I said, it is hard to work with, so you just have to be patient. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing that all the way around till we get to the stitch marker, put two into every stitch, and then meet me back here. Okay, so I am finished with my row two. I put two half double crochets into each stitch all the way up to the stitch right before the stitch marker. See, right there, and there's the stitch with the stitch marker. Okay, so now we're gonna begin row three. And for all of us making a small, um, we're gonna wait for um, the ones making medium and the ones making large to catch up with us, okay? So don't do anything right now if you're making a small until the next segment that, that, I, um, that I film. Okay, so right now I'm going to be talking to you guys making a medium. What you would do if you're making a medium is you would take out this stitch marker, okay? And you would put two half double crochets into this stitch. Okay, there's one. And there's two. Okay, and then I put my stitch marker back into the stitch right above. Okay, so this is for medium. You've got two into that stitch where the stitch marker was. Now you're gonna put one into the next. And one into the next. Okay. And then two into this one. Okay, so you're doing a second row of increase if you're making a medium. Um, and so that's what you do. You follow that pattern all the way around. You put two into one, and then one, and then one, and then two. Okay, so there's our first one, and this is our second one now. And now you're going to put one, and then one, and then two, and then one, and then one, and then two. And you do that all the way till you get over here. And then you wait for me, okay? Now you're gonna wait for me just like the, the ones making small are waiting for me. So if you're making a large, you're gonna do what I just said to the medium. You're gonna make your row three with that exact same increase, two, one, one, two, and then one, one, two, and then one, one, two. So it's gonna be, um, you're gonna follow that pattern all the way across, okay? But then you're gonna make another row of increase for your row four and your, um, row four of increase is going to consist of two where the stitch marker was and then one and then one and then one and then two and then one and then one and then one and then two so you've got an extra row of increases okay hope i didn't confuse y'all okay so that's for for large and when i get back all of us are going to be doing the exact same thing because by the time i come back Medium will have already done their other row of increase. Large will already have done their, their two other rows of increase besides the one I just showed y'all. So medium will have two rows of increases. Large will have three rows of increases. And us making small are only gonna have this row of increase that we just finished. Okay, so now I'm gonna get off camera and when I come back, we're all gonna follow the same instruction. So let's say we're all at the same spot, even though small, is just starting row three, medium is starting row four, and large is starting row five. Okay, so we just took the stitch marker out. Now we're all 
going to just put one half double crochet into that stitch and I'm not going to put the stitch marker right back there even though that's where I took it out of. I'm going to go one more into the next stitch and then I'm going to put my stitch marker there. Okay, so now we're just going to put one half double crochet into each stitch. All right, so all of us are doing the same thing. All righty. So that's all you do. And when you get back around, you click your row counter um, so that you don't forget what row you're on. And then stitch into the stitch marker and then stitch into the next one and then put your stitch marker on that one. All right, do that all the way. Um, I'll show you when you're going to make a switch to the other size hook. Okay, so I drew a foot here. I hope you can see it. Okay, so here's our foot. <laughs> here's my foot, and that's kind of what my foot looks like. Not quite so long, but okay, so this is what we're working on right now, is we're making um, this part right here. And now that we're making one single crochet into each stitch, it's going to start looking like a tube, okay? So we're going to use the E hook, the 3.5, all the way till we get to here, okay? So from here to here, it's the E hook, or 3.50 millimeter, okay? Once you get to here, it's it's hard to get this. If you were to keep on using the E hook, it would be really hard to get the sock up over that. So what I do from here, I switch over to the F hook, which is the 3.75 millimeter hook. Okay. And then what I did, which you probably don't have to do, you probably shouldn't do. It's just that I like my socks really tight. So what I would do if I was you, I would just continue on using the F hook. Um, I went back to an E hook from here all the way up till I got to the length that I wanted. I went back to an E hook, okay? Um, but like I said, it is hard. When you go back to the E, it is hard to get that over that, that part of your heel. Once you get it over the heel, it fits perfect because you use this F hook for the heel and then you went back to the E. I did that because I don't like my socks to roll down on me. But for those of y'all who, um, probably don't want to struggle putting your socks on just go with the E hook all the way to there once you get to there switch to your F hook and just continue on all right and I'm not going to meet you back here till you've got your sock the length that you want it okay alrighty guys I was just explaining to y'all what I did but you don't have to do the whole switching back to the E that's just what I did alrighty guys so I will meet you back here when you've got your sock as long as you want it you can make your sock up to the ankle, you can make it midway to the calf, or you can make it all the way up to your knee. Alrighty guys, I'll meet you back here when you've got the length of your sock that you want. Right now that we're starting to put one single crochet, I mean one double, one half double crochet into each stitch, now your sock is going to start doing this. It's gonna start curving, okay? So that's what it's doing now. So you can kind of see where I, uh, I used an E hook all the way up to here and right here you can tell where I've been trying it on because there's a little there's a little bump right there where my heel was. So from here I, I used an E hook and then from here on to about right here I used an F hook and then I used an E hook up here. And you can kind of see it in the stitches. See the stitches here are smaller and the F hook stitches are bigger. So anyway, alrighty guys, see you at the top of your sock. <laughs> Bye, have fun. Okay, so I'm back and I ended up making my sock as long as 60 rows of half double crochets. Um, I'm not sure if you all stopped here, or if you stopped there, or if you went up higher, but I'm at, row, at my row 60 and I just made my last half double crochet right before the marker. I'm going to take the marker out and if you want to be finished with your sock, if you like that finished look, that's fine. Just um, since you finished with the half double crochet there, make a single crochet and then a slip stitch and then finish it off right there. And that way it'll be a nice smooth decline by doing the single and then the slip stitch, okay? And you can just finish like that or you can put one single crochet around the whole thing to give it a nice finishing edge. 
but I'm also going to give you another option if y'all want to put like a ribbed stitch look okay so there was my last half double crochet and then the stitch marker was here so what I'm going to do now is put a slip uh, single crochet I mean where the stitch marker was okay and then I'm going to put a slip stitch after that okay and now what I'm going to do is chain up three one two and three okay and I'm going to put my stitch marker right there because that's where we're going to join in a minute okay so we're going to just put one double crochet into each stitch around till we get to the stitch marker okay this is only if you want a different look if you don't want this look I'm gonna show you how to make a ribbed stitch look I think that's what it's called that's what I call it and it's going to consist of one row of double crochets and then the next row is going to be front post back post okay and I'll tell you what that means for those of y'all who don't know what it means okay so just go ahead and keep making double crochets all the way around until you get back to the stitch marker and then I'll meet you back here okay so here I am at the end of the row with my double crochets and so now I'm going to join right there with a slip stitch so you go ahead and do the same thing okay and now we're going to chain up three two and three and now we're going to do you could leave it at that point if you want right there that looks cute too um, but if you want the the what I call the ribbed look um, then you yarn over and you go under that um, double crochet yarn over pull up a loop and finish off your double crochet now okay and now we're gonna yarn over and the next double crochet right there we're gonna come behind it see we just picked up that double crochet see how it's behind the hook that's why it's called back post pick up a loop finish off our double crochet if I can get through the sock yarn <laughs> and so see this looks like it's in the front and that's in the back and now we're gonna yarn over and now we're gonna go in the front Oops. I had left a little thread on that other stitch okay now I'm gonna go from behind grab that double crochet pick up a loop and then finish off my double crochet okay now I'm gonna go so that was the one from behind now I'm gonna go to the front and I'm gonna do this all the way around so you can already kind of see you that it's starting to have a little ribbed look effect okay so that was the front post now I'm gonna go from behind and pull that double crochet back there yarn over pick up a loop yarn over go through two yarn over go through two if you're newer and that's too confusing for you you can just go ahead and leave it at that point okay but for those of y'all that want to go on go ahead and do this all the way around and meet me back here when you get to to this point okay at the end of the row okay so I'm almost all the way around and I just did a front post now I'm gonna do a back post if you're watching this video um, all the way through its entirety before starting your project um, I have a, another tutorial on my channel that explains in more depth and a little slower how to do the front post back post um, so you might want to go check that out okay so I just did the back post and then I'm gonna do the front post which is perfect because this one right here where we first made our chain that looks like a that's a back post and then the front post so we're gonna it's gonna be continuous okay so now we're gonna do the front post see that's what I'm talking about see front and then that one where we first started is the back one and then front so now we're gonna 
count up three, one, two, three, slip stitch, okay? And now we're gonna chain up three, one, two, and three. Okay, so once again, see, because we're lifting up on the on the double crochet next to this one, this ends up looking like that's a back post and this is the first front post. So then when we come back around, we should end with a front post, okay? Alrighty, so just go ahead and continue. You might want to put a stitch marker there if you're going to get confused. Um, so just go ahead and do the exact same thing. Front post. And then this one, you'll already know which one is the back post because it's already hidden back there. So just grab that and do your back post now. And now you'll see that that's the front post. So you'll grab that and finish that. See, and that gives you the ribbed look. At least that's what I call it. I don't know what else to call it. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Oops, I didn't double crochet though, did I? How many more rows am I going to do this for? Let me look at it and see how many I want to do. I'm probably going to do it for this row and then the next one. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do, after this one, I'll do one more row and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so here I am. I'm finished with my front post, back post, and I'm at the end of my row here. So I did, so we did one row of double crochets, and then I did three rows of front post, back post. So now I'm going to count up three, one, two, three, and I'm going to slip stitch, and then I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to cut my yarn right there. And then I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to snug down that little knot and then I'm just going to weave in my end. Okay, so that's what the ribbing looks like and it gives it a little bit more stretch. So that's why I like to do that. Um, so, okay, I'll come back on camera and show you what it looks like on my foot. Okay, so this is what my sock looks like. Here's the top. And here we go. And... You can see right here where the stitches are bigger where I switched to the F hook and then I went back with the E hook up to here and then I made the rib stitching. So that's my sock. You can embellish yours however you want. If you used a solid color you might want to do some stuff to it or you might want to put a fancier trim on yours. Um, but this is my sock and I'm happy with it. Woohoo! My feet thank me. <laughs> Like I said, I love this yarn because I was not expecting for it to come out striped and I absolutely love it. Yay! Alrighty guys, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll meet you back here next Tuesday for Tutorial Tuesday at Glamaw's. I don't know what I have up my sleeve for next week, so it'll be a surprise to all of us. <laughs> Usually by Saturday or Sunday, I've kind of decided what I'm going to um, do for the next tutorial. So, alrighty guys, thank you so much for visiting me here at Made with Love by Glamma, where everything is always made and taught by me with love for you. Alrighty guys, bye! Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our Glamour's channel. channel.